Sam, you're always the one doing this kind of work. Now you get to tell the story of your car. No, Are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sam, my friend. Editor-in-chief, Super Street Magazine. You are in charge of content and, and getting people together and featuring their cars. So I wanted it to be about you this time. Okay, so before your before Euros, right? That was the last car you really put out there. The what was that? Before you, before you had your Euro. Yeah, right? I had a Volkswagen GTI. It was actually my car in college. Yes. That was my last personal project. Car. Right, and I and you've been working and you get around, but you haven't done a personal car, and you ended up doing a Supra. Yes. Okay. Now, <laughs> I know everyone's making their jokes. There's actually a hashtag that's in the thousands now that says not a Supra. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. people love to hate it, right? <laughs> so people talk badly about them with the whole BMW thing, but yeah. yet, right, their their modifications coming up, people are buying them, and people love them whether they want to admit it or not. Yeah. So, yes, there's a hashtag, but there's a there's a what, 30, 32 uh, I think. Oh, okay. That's yeah. where we I are. I thought it was over 20, but that over 30. Oh, no, I I've been I've been told 28 <laughs> counted by hand but plus North Hall. Okay. So it's probably 30 something. So the point is Supras everywhere. Lip kits, wide bodies, motors, no motor mods. What is, what is it that you wanted to do with yours that makes it different than everyone else's? Okay. Uh, I would say maybe it's two parts. Okay. One, I wanted to take some of the influences from my European car background and kind of put it into the Supra. Okay. And because the Supra was a joint collaboration with BMW and I've always loved BMW. Yes. You know, I kind of wanted to build it how I would have kind of built like a BMW. Yeah, you know? yeah. So um, with that, I kind of tried to get parts that you'd normally see on a European car. So yeah. that's why I went with the BBSLM wheels, which are the same wheels that's actually on my GTI. Yes. Uh, that's why I went with KW suspension. Uh, KW did the development on the Nurburgring Supra, so like, I want to use a European suspension manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, the car seats, Bremel brakes, the Kropovic exhaust. Yes. All kind of European. Brands. Yes. But I mean, top quality. Yeah. Right? Top no, quality. it's not like one of those things where someone's gonna be like, oh well, I don't really understand why he did that yeah. because yeah. that doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. They're all companies that manufacture for a variety of chassis, exactly. and they're high end. I mean, LMs are one of those. LMs are the the TE37 of the Euro world. It it's classic. It's, there's nothing it doesn't look good on. It's been around for yeah. 20, 30 years, I want to say. <laughs> so, I mean, so you have the LMs. The white on the gold is a classy combination, mm -hmm. right? And then now the one thing that you have in addition to the wheels that no one else has is this arrow. Yes. So let's talk about the arrow because everyone went wide. Yes. But here you and are. Could have gone wide. You could have. <laughs> but this fender alone stands out. No one else has these. Yes. So let's talk about that. Okay. First, I didn't want to go wide because I didn't want to cut up my brand new car. Yes. <laughs> I just spent like sixty thousand dollars on this thing. I'm not gonna cut the fenders up. Yes. Uh, but uh, I enjoyed the car stock body. I think the the fenders alone on the original car are pretty aggressive. They are. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Part of the other concept of the car is we wanted to make it functional and we wanted to bring it to a time attack and super lap battle. Yes. So Evasive, who has a lot of experience in time attack, I joined with them so we could develop a kit that would be functional without going full wide body. Uh, so it comes with the carbon splitter, the carbon front lip, uh, side skirts, and these Sweet mirrors. Yeah, the, the mirrors are awesome, man. The, the, whole, the whole setup sweet. is nice. Yeah. Uh, this fender, uh, it's it's not like a wide body fender, but it you know it just kind of goes in to expose more front tire. Yes. And you know makes it look a lot more aggressive without having to do a, a wide body. So you like the OEM body lines, the yes. EVS lip kit accented yes. it well. Fenders, mirrors, gold LMs. European parts. And the only thing probably Japanese is the Voltex link. <laughs> sure. But the Swanwick's awesome. Yeah, the Swanwick's awesome and you know Voltex is kind of the, one of the best when it comes to aero. Yeah. And when we did a tra 
stock track day in the car, we noticed the back end getting loose in a lot of high speed. Okay. So it was kind of one of those things. I didn't want to do it. Because yes. I didn't want to drill holes in my trunk. But, okay. You know, in the nature of going fast, we had to do it. <laughs> and so you did it. And it completes the look of the car. I think. It's, uh, you know, it looks like a car you can take on the track. And yeah, the whole point of this car was I didn't want to just build it for SEMA, but I really wanted it to be, you know, proven performance. Well, the thing about it is, is the less is more applies here for real. Yeah. Because on paper, it's a very minimal, yeah. but it's killing it, right? People are loving it. And I think you did a great job. And it's important to, you're the one highlighting people for a living. That's what you do. You know, I've had the opportunity to write with you and work with you for years. And um, it's it's something that I was like, I want to put Sam in front and let him showcase his car. It's exciting. It's, it totally needed me. Right? <laughs> to be on the other exciting. side. It's been exciting, you know. People are like posting pictures of my car and tagging me. It's been a... Uh, been really cool <laughs> but you, you know what honestly sam man it's deserving of it the car's fantastic you know thank, thank you, you for talking with us man thank you brother all right what's up Uh, we're just uh, we're just doing a little vlog action. A vlog. Let me continue. Let me not let you interrupt what you're doing. All right. It's good to see you though, Mike. Yeah, it's good to see you too, bro. How's uh, SEMA 2019 treating you? <laughs> it's even better now seeing you though. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you too, dude. Yeah, just trying to get this one cranked out. Started this morning. Uh, almost at the end of the road, man. Alright, you're gonna be running around? Yeah. You here till Yeah, I'm gonna be here uh, till. Right, so, what you're looking at is why is this, uh, you know, I'm drawing on yellow paper, but it happens to be the largest post it note. So, uh, That's the largest post it note that post it note makes. 3M makes. Uh, this 3M, is the yeah. largest post it note to date. So, 3M happens on McGuire's, right? It just made perfect sense. I am known for the way I got kind of my notoriety online was. I paint very intricately on post-it notes. So I started this in 2013, and then over the span of uh, six years, I'm at 275 cars. That's insane. So, and then I'm collecting, and for me being a car designer, but also just love, you know, car culture in general, and every kind of car culture, everything from the stand scene, I could say, all the way to, you know, as he says, hot rod, culture, uh, trucking. Like, I'm just influenced by everything, you know? One yeah. thing I still need to get into is racing, but for the most part, also too, is like me and Mike are on the same mission. We love being around people and hearing their stories. And I get inspired. I can't draw people's portraits, but I'll draw the hell out of your car. So people think these are just like pictures cropped down and put down, but really, if you look at it in person, you can really grasp the sense of like what you're looking at. And this is like the blueprint? Like, this is the technical, like the, yeah. I used to cover these up, but I loved them so much. I was like, you know what? Let me just keep it at that cool. way. So like the you see the shift. Yeah, it's yeah. how he gets yeah. proportions and the mathematics right, you yeah. know, for the dimensions. So, you know, and then, you know, right now I get my passion for motorcycles out of my system right now. Uh, this is going on a wine label uh, next year. Very cool, guys. So, it's been pretty good, man. It's been a good run so far. Sean. What's up? Hello, my friend. Oh man, you know what? This is what's going on. So we had a race car with a Mother's Choice Award. So let's talk about that real quick. Did you see that one coming? I did not, but I've been told several times that not all show cars are race cars, but all race, race cars, cars are show cars. cars. So there you go. Look, so look, Tread Pass last year, yep. right? Some people bring a car back, some people don't, but you did Holly, right? Center of Central Hall. It does not get any cooler than this yeah, location. It's, uh, it's pretty rad. Right? Yep. So, like I said time and time again, we're not gonna talk about mods. That's been out there. Yep. And it's gonna be out there, right? So the guys, the Cherish culture, they're gonna have a written feature. What we're talking about, Sean, is why this caused blood, sweat, and tears to come out of you. I wanna know how many thousands of hours. I want to know what percentage of the original Datsun is left because that's something that kind of flies under the radar. Yep. So we have 
right? Everyone who knows Dotson, we know the A pillars up there. We know what the roof looks like and we know what the headlight area looks like. But you just made that the shape of a Dotson, yeah. right? What percentage of the car is original Dotson? So if I had to take a guess, probably close to maybe two or three percent. There's not much left. And two really, or three? Yeah, and really what's left is what's good. Uh, you're a Datsun guy, so a good friend of mine who I was into Datsuns, uh, when I told him I was going to get one, he said, well, make sure you get two more because they're all that bad. And uh, this one was was that bad. I mean, it was a car that really should have just went, you know, to the you know, dump or crusher or something like that. And, um, yeah, you know, some people say I ruined this car, but it, it was beyond ruined. It was in really poor condition. So. so did you end up getting two or three? I did not. I uh, did not take good advice. Okay. So I kind of decided uh, after I bought it, tore it apart. One of you know, my original idea was to do like a resto mod, you know, track day car, and then um, kind of settled in six months after owning it that that's, that, that was not going to happen uh, with this car. Uh, it was just, just not, you know, structurally sound. So I kind of thought about some things that I really wanted to do that I was passionate about. And I always wanted to race Pikes Peak on two wheels. Yes. And um, I kind of wanted to give this thing a really, you know, really cool purpose and, um, you know, just build kind of a bucket list type thing. So that's what it is. It's yep. Pikes Peak. That's what you're going to do with this. Yep. All right. So for the people who don't know what all goes into that, what are the requirements for them to allow you on the mountain? So uh, my class is an exhibition class. The only requirements I have is safety. Okay. So the, I'm, I'm not limited to aero. I'm not limited to horsepower. I'm not limited to tire. Pretty much do anything I want as long as I'm within safety guidelines. And okay. You know, chassis, strength, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So when do you want to see it and yourself in the driver's seat on Pikes Peak? Yeah, we're uh, aiming for 2020. Uh, Yes. So um, we've done everything they've asked us to do. Which uh, is? Like uh, what kind of licensures do you need? Yeah. Certifications? Yep. So they asked um, to I get a TT, uh, SCCA TT Pro Pro license. So I've got that this year. Yes. I've got a couple of um, uh, pro races under my belt this year. Our first pro uh, race out at um, Road Atlanta Global Time Attack. We've got a third podium in a pro class. So yes. Pretty solid. And yes. And uh, yeah, we're just fine tuning the car. and getting it ready so what are the power numbers right now uh the car weighs i get my put the what it weighs first sure in a world of uh horsepower yes it's kind of lame yes but i think the impressive part is how much the car weighs yes so we're at 2600 pounds uh with myself in it with fuel uh so we're really 2600 yeah 2600. you and a full tank uh yeah it should be roughly full tank of fuel yeah and then um we make 415 rear wheel horsepower so we have a really really good power to weight um, but with that, that 415 is not asking much for this LS motor. So we have tons of reliability. We're not right. We're not asking to this to do this thing. You know, asking to do very much. Okay. So, uh, man, we talked about it. I told you I might fly out just to be out there when you make it to the top. It's magical. <laughs> I, I've seen the photos. I've never been. It's one of the few places and events that I have have absolutely no doubt that I will go to. And you know what? Honestly, my friend, to see a hand built carbon. Z with this much craziness and the amount of effort and time. You know what? Let's talk about that real quick. How many did you log it? Do you have no. a log of hours? Hell no. You don't want to know. No, I don't want to know. Same thing with the money. Right, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Take a guess. So uh in months or years. So I have it took me four and a half years to get to the uh, I'm sorry. It took me four years to get the car to SEMA last year. Yes. And um I was that guy that brought a non running car uh -huh. to SEMA. Wasn't really wasn't happy about that for myself, but um, shortly after, about six months later, we got the car on, running and driving and on the track. So yeah, I would say about four and a half years it took it to get to the track. Yes. So so by the time you get two Pikes, you're talking about five and a half years. Yeah. But you know what, this man? Dedication. People th th think people this thing is happens overnight. Exactly. It doesn't. That's the, that's a good point, Sean. Social media people are like, oh, they, they finished that car in six months, and you're like, no, absolutely yeah. not. Especially when you're putting your life on the line. This is not an autocross course where if you spin out, you hit a cone. Yeah. yeah. This is Pikes Peak. Boulders. Yeah. Or cliffs. Or you just exit the mountain and land back on ground zero. Deuces. So, Sean, my friend, I I appreciate your time. I may damn well save up my money and fly out there when you're ready. Come on. Man, let's do it. So thank you for your time, my friend. I appreciate you. Thanks, man.
you had 10 words to tell everyone who's watching, say it. Go quick. First thing that comes uh, to mind, quick. I love everyone who's watching, so thank you very yeah. much. Yeah!